Hello and good Monday evening, Chicago. Well, that wasn't necessarily the, the best week we had last week, was it? The Bears lose their first game of the season in an ugly, ugly way against the Colts. And the White Sox and Cubs both figured out ways to make early playoff exits. Well, they can't they can't all be winners. Let's let's get our way through this. Let's work our way through this some of a little bit here. You have found your way into Shy Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I am your host, Adam Karnick. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk some sports with me. We have got a fun show lined up tonight. We're going to kick things off with the Bears. And we've got Sean Hammond here to help us out with that. You may remember Sean over Labor Day weekend. He helped set the stage for the Bears season. Now we're a quarter of the way through. We're going to talk both yesterday's game and then try to figure out just who are these Bears exactly four games into the season. Then switch gears a little bit and talk some baseball try to to make sense of what happened to the White Sox, see what happened to the Cubs. What does this mean going forward for both of those clubs? And then COVID reared its ugly head in a big way in the NFL. Several games get moved. Other teams looking like their games might get moved. All kinds of new rules coming down for the players in the league. We'll take a look at all that. And we got a Bears game coming up on Thursday, so we'll preview Bears and Bucks for you. Going to be a busy night. Everybody buckle up. Let's have some fun. All right. Once again, this is Chi-Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. The real quick housekeeping, you can follow along with all the shows on Twitter, at IE Sports. This station, you can follow along with this show directly, at Chi-Town Weekly, I-E-S-R. And you can follow along with me directly on Twitter, at Adam underscore Karnick. Let's bring in Sean Hammond. Sean is a Bears beat reporter for Shaw Media and a good, good friend of the program. He was very gracious enough with his time to once again step on with us. You can follow him at Twitter at Sean underscore Hammond. Sean, thank you again for, for hopping on. What was that yesterday at Soldier Field? Yeah, Adam, thanks for having me. And, I, you know, I don't know either. That was uh, not a pretty... Not a pretty football game for the Chicago Bears, specifically on that offensive side. It's kind of, I, I know it's a bummer for Bears fans because they finally, they finally turn the page on Mitch Trubisky and, and then they go out and do that. And, uh, you know, I know they finished with 11 points, but that was really, they had three points through 55 minutes. That was, that was not a good performance for, for Matt Nagy and the Bears. And, not only just the three points through 55 minutes, they just, they couldn't do things on offense. Larry and Taryn are both chiming in in the chat. Well, the Bears are three and one. That's a pretty good start. But it feels, coming off of a loss like that yesterday, I think it feels more, it almost feels worse than it is, maybe. Yeah, this is a this is a weird three and one. And, and Nick Foles said last night, uh, something to the effect of we haven't made it easy on ourselves these first four weeks and and they sure haven't because yeah last night was ugly but you got to take into account you know even some of those wins were ugly uh you know they they're they're lucky that they they're in the situation they're in because you know comebacks like like they had against detroit and against atlanta those those don't don't happen often and uh you know they they didn't look too good in that second half against the Giants either. They almost blew that game. So, yeah, they're three and one, and and credit to them. You know, three wins is three wins. Um, but at the same time, there's there's a lot of games ahead, and and they need to clean up some things. Yeah. So let's let's look at yesterday a little more specifically first. The the number to me, going back and and looking at the game a little bit, what jumped out to me the most was the offense on third down. 
just four of 14 on third down, including just one of six in the first half. And I think I counted at one point, and you may have the count better than I do, but I think they missed upwards of six straight third down conversions. And these weren't third and 10, third and 15, third and eight. These were third and one, third and three. What was the problem on third down? Yeah, it, it's a curious thing because it seems like we're talking about this every time, uh, you know, Matt Nagy's team loses. It, it's almost always the conversation. The third down uh, percentage just isn't good enough. And I don't know. I mean, especially, you know, in those short situations, the Bears really struggled to run the ball yesterday at all against the Colts. They finished with 28 rushing yards. And that's just not going to get it done against anybody. Um, and that's a really good Colts defense. I think, uh, you know, there's a big enough sample size now. I know they played a couple of, you know, they played the Jets and a couple other poor teams, but, but there's a big enough sample size that, that you could say that this Colts defense is pretty good. Um, so once they started stopping the run, once they started stopping David Montgomery and the Bears run, um, you know, that really made it hard for Nick Foles to, to do anything in the passing game because while there were some third and ones where they struggled. At the same time, there were plenty of plenty of situations where they're getting into, uh, you know, second and long, third and longs, and just not finding the success uh, running the ball. And then that puts them into tougher situations, uh, you know, as as a possession goes on. Yeah, and then yeah, you know, I'm glad you brought up the the 28 yards rushing. I had I had noted that too, where it's just you've got to you've got to be able to produce more on the ground. And obviously the bulk of that falls on the players, but I felt like too, for the first time all season, it felt like Nagy abandoned the run. And obviously against the Colts defense, that is as good as it. And I agree there, man, that's a good, that's a good defense. That's a, a huge step up from the Falcons or the Giants or the Lions, certainly. And that's a, that's a great defense, but it still, it felt like they got down and it was, well, okay, we're down. That's it. I'm done. I'm, I'm all done running. Just, just chuck it out there, boys. Let's, let's throw the ball around. What does the onus for the lack of run game, does that fall more on the players or more on the coaching? Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, We've seen this before from Matt Nagy uh, last year. You know, I think the Bears, looking at the numbers here in front of me, the Bears had had 16 rushing attempts yesterday, and you know that's that's not a whole lot, and but that's far from the fewest that they've had in a, in a game since Matt Nagy's been the coach. I know there was the one game last year they they had seven rushing attempts, which I think was the fewest in about a million years for the Bears. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it is because. They bring in all these new offensive coaches. Uh, you know, Juan Castillo is the O-line coach now, and, and he's uh, the run game coordinator. He's in charge of the run game, and, and they built, bring in Bill, Bill Lazor to run uh, the offense overall, and they talk all offseason about, about getting the run going, and then, you know, they kind of did abandon it. Uh, you know, 42 pass attempts to 16 rushing attempts, that's, that's a notable difference, and I know... You know, a lot of that's dictated by the situation. They're not going to be running when they're down, you know, nineteen to three in the in the fourth quarter. But still, you gotta at some. I don't know. You gotta you gotta at least give it a try, right? Especially if if Nick Foles isn't completing those passes that you need him to. I mean, try something else, right? Yeah, and they weren't down. Yeah, it got to nineteen to three, but they weren't down that for a long stretch. For a long stretch in the second half, it was thirteen to three. You know, it was a ten point game right. for a huge chunk of the second half, and it it just it felt like Nagy felt like it was significantly bigger of a day, more like it was twenty four to three rather than thirteen to three. Uh Taryn in the chat here on Spreaker, and by the way, if you are listening live on Spreaker, go ahead and log in and, and hop in the chat. We'd love to interact with you that way. Taryn brings up a good point in the chat. Um he's willing to cut the Bears a little bit of a of a break since Tariq Cohen was hurt. Did that really affect the run game? I know they use Cordero Patterson a lot in that in that Cohen kind of role. Well, it certainly it certainly affected them, I think. I mean, no, Tariq Cohen's not 
the type of guy who's going to get 15 carries or, or whatever in a game, but he is a nice change of pace. And Cordero Patterson isn't isn't the same type of runner that Tariq Cohen is. And I don't know that the Bears have anybody who's quite the same as, as Tariq Cohen. Uh, I think, you know, there were a couple, two plays from that Falcons game stand out um, with Cohen. He had a really nice run. Um, I forget what it was, 15 yards or something. And he had a really nice uh, screen screenplay that, that wasn't obviously a run, but it, it, it got him out in space and it, you, you could see his speed a little bit. And, and David Montgomery and Cordero Patterson, while Patterson is a, is a fast dude, he's just bigger. He's, he's a bigger guy. Um, and David Montgomery isn't, isn't the same type of runner either. I think that really did affect them. I don't know what you do because I don't know that, that you have a perfect fit for that role other than Tariq Cohen, who obviously isn't coming back. Yeah, I mean they've get, they've got Artavius Bush that they brought up to the the big squad. They also, uh, I think I saw they signed Lamar Miller to their practice squad. You know, so something. But yeah, no nobody that's uh, really necessarily the the mold of a of a Tariq Cohen. All right, so now looking at this team as a whole, they are three and one. The NFL is a week to week league. It can you can you can be the Cleveland Browns week one where you're getting your head handed to you and you can't move the ball ten yards, and then you're the Cleveland Browns week four putting up almost fifty points on the Cowboys. What what do we know about this Bears team four games into the season? Yeah, I mean that's 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 the question, isn't it? Um well we know that they got to figure some things out at quarterback. I mean, that just was not a good performance from Foles, and and Nagy was, I don't want to say making excuses for him, but he was he was pointing out that okay, Nick, this was his first week as the as the full time starter, and while that's true and that's a valid point, you know, he did some pretty impressive things a week earlier <laughs> without having those those starter reps. So so where was that? I guess. Um, you just need some consistency from that position or, or it's going to keep being these, these type of games where, you know, they're, they're either falling behind or they're just uh, scratching and clawing their way back into it. I do think while this Bears defense isn't the 2018 version, I do think this is a really good Bears defense. Um, to, to hold the Colts to, I think, four field goals, you know, that's a win um, because – because they were on the field that whole game. It, the time of possession in that second half, especially, I think it was five or six minutes in favor of the Colts. And when you're when you're on the field that much as a defense, that that is exhausting and that is tiring. And to come up with those stops, uh, you know, in the red zone or, or even just outside the red zone, in those situations, that's a win. And and frankly, your offense just has to score more points. You should be able to win in the NFL. If you're giving up 19 points in a game, I was I was just going to say that in in 2020, the NFL in 2020, if you're only giving up 19 points, you should win. Um, and then speaking of of points, the Bears, yes, they've got 85 points in four games, but 49 of those points have come in the fourth quarter. They're they've only scored 36 points in the first three quarters combined of a, of these four games what what's yeah, the that, deal there I, I i don't know because that's another thing that that we talked about a lot last year uh the bears just didn't score early in games and and they're still not doing it and and you look at this tampa bay buccaneers team that's coming in and they've scored 38 points in the first quarter through their first four games so so that's a a, a matchup here this week that's a little bit concerning if you're the bears I don't know what it is. Um, I, I do know, you know, you can see their, it seems like their, the Bears commitment to the run is most evident early in the game. I don't know if that plays a factor in it because the clock's running. So, so you just have less time to score. Um, I think there's something to that, but at the same time, uh, you know, they're, they're just not getting the results and especially in the red zone because they have had some nice first quarter drives, but, but they haven't always finished them off. Yeah. And then looking at 
the Tampa Bay game this coming Thursday. I saw the Bears release their their preliminary injury report. They didn't they didn't practice, but they they actually released a report. There's nothing on there that jumped out to me. Khalil Mack would have been limited. Khalil Mack's been limited basically the entire season. Hicks and Massey and Mooney and Woods are on there, but they're all listed as full. It seems like they're relatively healthy for this game Thursday, which these Thursday night games, it always feels like it's it's simply who can avoid coming in as the walking wounded. Coming into this game against Tampa, what are some keys to to winning that game since it's a quick turnaround? Yeah, it is a quick turnaround. And and one of the things that Tampa, just looking at the numbers, Tampa's been really good at protecting Tom Brady. Um, he's been sacked five times in four games. Uh, they're they're uh, their opponents are, are pressuring him very, I think it's like coming into this week, it was like eight or 9% of his dropbacks. They get pressure on him, which is, was one of the best uh, protections in, in the NFL. And um, the bears need to try to, to counter that somehow. And I think they, they are probably the best pass pass rush that the Tampa's seen maybe. Um, so I think that will be the key with Khalil Mack and Akeem Hicks. Akeem Hicks has had a really good start to the year. Um, especially uh, those first three games, I, I um, he 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 didn't really stand out yesterday, but but he's had a good a good start to the year, and I think they need to to see that continue. If they can uh, put a little bit of pressure on Brady, I think that will help. Um, the other thing is is that Tampa Bay runs the ball pretty well. Um, we saw Ronald Jones this week, uh, even without Leonard Fournette. Ronald Jones had a really nice game, uh, 111 yards, I think. And we've seen some teams run the ball well against the Bears, uh, especially uh, just thinking week one against the Lions. Adrian Peterson had a really nice game. Um, so I really think it's going to at least, uh, you know, looking at the defensive side, it's going to come down to those two things. And offensively, I don't know, man. Those, this, that was just a rough performance. I mean, I think they just need to, to wipe the slate clean here and, and go back to the drawing board. I, I, I don't know what, what it was. I mean, they, they had their most success getting the ball to Allen Robinson. So you got to think that they, they need to keep going to him. Um, and then somebody else has to step up. Anthony Miller has been pretty quiet. Uh, Darnell Mooney's had a couple of nice games, um, but he was a little bit quiet yesterday too. Uh, you know, who's, who's going to be that next playmaker for the bears on the offensive side. Yeah. I, I noticed that Foles really was trying to get the ball to Mooney a lot yesterday. I think I I commented something like four or five of his of his first twelve passes were were attempted to Mooney, and it feels it feels to me like Mooney is becoming a little bit more of that next option as opposed to Miller. Miller had some bad drops yesterday. I know he wants to be that that clutch guy and he gets frustrated when he doesn't necessarily get targets he had some rough drops yesterday where the the interception was on one day that went through his hands and I think he had another one on third down that went through his hands yeah Nick Nick Foles took credit for the interception but you know that's that's what he's supposed to do that's what a leader does but at the same time like that ball was in, in Anthony Miller's hands you got you got to catch that ball yeah. um yeah just looking at the numbers Darnell Mooney was targeted 9 times yesterday uh, right behind Allen Robinson with 10 and and Anthony Miller was way down there at 5 i mean i i would agree with you that Mooney is is stepping up and making a case to be that number 2 guy um and some of those targets for Mooney he had 9 targets 5 catches a couple of those were, were not really catchable balls or, or there was some sort of miscommunication there. But um, he's, he's making the case, certainly. I, I would say so as well. Yeah. All right. Well, Matt, Matt Nagy, we're, we're getting out of Nagy's time of year. You know, we're three years into Nagy. He's, he's nine and three in the first quarter of the season, 14 and 13, uh, all, all after that. Hopefully the Bears can. Uh, reverse fortune on that a little bit start stockpiling some wins sean thank you so much for hopping on and and talking bears with us this evening stay safe say well and we'll talk to you later yeah thanks for having me adam all right 
That is Sean Hammond of Shaw Media. And again, you can follow him on Twitter at Sean Hammond. He does an awesome job doing a bunch of good write-ups and good, good coverage of the Bears. All right, a quick break, and now we are going to transition a little bit and talk some baseball, talk about the the Cubs and the White Sox, what happened to them over the weekend. This is Chi-Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Soccer Scoreboard Show with your host Gabriel Montoya. This is the show for soccer, football, football fans, or whatever you call the beautiful game. Every week I tackle the latest and greatest news from around the soccer world. From the English Premier League, to the World Cup, to MLS, Liga, and Mekis, and more. You can listen to the Soccer Scoreboard Show and our lineup of fantastic guests every Friday at noon here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Football fans, this is me, your boy Larry B, inviting you to join myself, Colin Reynolds, Mike Pat, and John Felipe for one of the most electrifying football shows you have ever heard. Three and out, right here at IE Sports Radio. Recap of the week before, a preview of what's to come, and of course, three hardcore head to head primetime face offs each week. You don't want to miss it. Hi everybody, it's Calvin here from USRN here to give you an important message. Since 2017, we have done our absolute best to provide you with nothing but the highest quality of sports calls in the greatest of quantity possible. Thanks to you, our station has grown more than we ever thought. That's why, with your help, we would like to grow even further. Just think, twice the amount of your favorite calls, 24 hours of coverage, talk shows, play-by-play, game-by-game analysis, and so much more. That's right, USRN2 is officially in development. But we can't do it alone. We have set up a GoFundMe page that you can access from our homepage on the left of your screen. We also are planning special giveaways and prizes to our highest donors. Our goal here at USRN is to bring you the best calls possible at no cost to you. In order to continue to do that, we need your help now. Please check out our GoFundMe page, and if you would like to know how you can help, you can email usrnradio at gmail.com. Without your support, we couldn't do what we do. Hey guys, it's Blake Henley, better known as H-Town Blake to some of you. Happy to announce that Faces Loaded is back in full force. We'll be bringing that high heat every Tuesday night here on IE Sports Radio. So come home, get ready, dig into that batter's box, and see if you can chase that high heat, baby. So we'll be coming to you live with all the stats, all the rundowns, all the division rivalries, and every team that's going to make the playoff push to get to that one and only October and get to the pinnacle of what baseball is to hoist that commissioner's trophy when it's all said and done.
What's good, fight fans? It's your boy, Marcus Los Great. Here to give you what you want. Here to give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming to you live. Straight from your mama's basement with a crispy white tea. <laughs> we are coming to you live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And welcome back into Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm your host, Adam Karnick. Thank you again for checking in, especially if you're listening live. If you're listening as a podcast later on the week, hello. Thank you for, for taking some time. So, we talked a lot of bears in the first segment. I wanted to do a little bit of wrap up there. Taryn was very active in the in the chat there, talking about Bears and Bucks. He's he's liking that the the Bears have a good chance. He feels the Bucks are banged up offensively. I did see that OJ Howard is likely to miss the game for the Bucks. That'll be a, a big miss for them. Might mean Rob Gronkowski makes his Tampa debut. The Chargers have a good pass rush too, as Taryn talks about. He's a big he's a big Chargers fan. He talked about how. The Chargers didn't get any sacks on Tom Brady. I think some of that's just Brady gets the ball out so fast. He realizes, especially now at the tender age of 43, Brady just can't move, so he's got to get that ball out quick. I think that contributes to the lack of sacks there. And then it, Taryn says, it's always great to have Sean on the show. It is always great to have Sean on the show. Thank you again, Sean Hammond, for for jumping on and, and giving us some time. It's it's always great to, to talk Bears with somebody that covers the team on a daily basis. So thank you again, Sean, for, for taking some time on your Monday. Let's get into some baseball. That was rough last week. Things started off great. The White Sox got off to a, a good start in Game 1, got a, got a good win in Oakland. Things... Felt like they were they were trending in the right direction. You you liked how things looked in that game, and then it just it fell apart there for the White Sox in in Game Two, and then of course the Game Three things really fell apart. The Cubs, on the other hand, my goodness, the same problems that we keep talking about over and over again with the Cubs reared their ugly heads yet again and so both teams wind up making early exits out of the postseason I want to start with the Cubs and because unfortunately I feel like the Cubs situation is a little more depressing and a little little more dire of a situation. So we'll we'll start with the the worst of the two situations and then we'll we'll transition into the White Sox and feel a little bit better about ourselves hopefully by the time by the time we're done. Cubs. One run in two games. One run in 18 innings. You're just not going to win ball games if you're not hitting. When we talked last week, I brought up for the Cubs, my fear was, and I've, I've talked about it the last several the last several shows now with the Cubs, their big guys needed to step up and be the big bats offensively, and they just weren't. Listen to these numbers. Now, this is Anthony Rizzo, Chris Bryant, Javier Baez, Wilson Contreras, and Kyle Schwarber, the five big core pieces of this offense, combined in the two-game wildcard series, combined two for 32 at the plate, four walks, and um, 
I didn't write down the strikeout number. I want to say it was it was six or seven strikeouts between them. That's just not going to cut it. Only two hits. One was a double. No home runs. No RBIs. Nothing from your big bats. Absolutely nothing from those guys. You you just have to have your big guys step up. And I know there was a lot of talk, especially in game one, that, oh, Ross, he, he left Kyle Hendricks in there too long. He, he left Hendricks in too long. He faced one too many batters. That's when it blew up. All right, yes, Hendricks did give up a home run that ultimately surrendered the lead to the to the final batter he faced. But, man, you've got to be able to score more than one run in order to win a, a baseball game. And that's what, I mean, that's been the problem for the Cubs, really, ever since 2017. They've ju- Epstein has referenced it many times that the offense is broken. And we, we saw it rear its ugly head yet again against the Marlins. So now what? Epstein has always talked about how he feels that 10 years with one organization is about the max that he feels comfortable doing. He feels like once you hit a 10-year threshold with a with an organization that it's it's probably time for a change. Next season is would be his 10th season with the Cubs and he he talked today uh, with with reporters about that and he he made no bones about how he's focused on this upcoming season, he's focused on trying to make the Cubs better in 2021, but that he probably won't that he pro- that he probably won't stick around past 2021. And there was even a report. Uh, Dave Kaplan had a report earlier uh, that uh, that Theo might even leave before this season that that he and he and Ricketts might sit down and they might decide that you know what now might be the time for Theo to kind of walk away from the team a little bit Theo uh he was able to kind of stem that today he said no 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 no. I I expect to be here in 2021 but uh but lo- looking at that um it's still he's going to be kind of transitioning the team to some new leadership. What do you do with the Cubs? I, I, I'm hoping to. I'm trying to look at the calendar and figure out when would be best to throw it in. But I want to do a little bit more of an in-depth look at both the Cubs and the White Sox to, to take a, a deeper dive into both teams and, and figure out you know what, what this offseason might look like for both of those teams and want to find somebody to, to come on and talk, uh, both Cubs and White Sox with me a little bit and, and throw some different ideas out there for both of those clubs. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Program the show while you're on the air. There you go. Um, but looking at it in short for the Cubs, I'm not sure how you fix this team because this has been kind of the Cubs MO, you know, offensively, they've been built around the idea of you get walks, you, you score via the home run and you, as a byproduct of that, you have a lot of strikeouts and what has proven to be a major flaw for this team, you know, and the, and the other thought there is, you know, and you want to get the starter out of there early and get to a team's bullpen as soon as you can so that you can you can force their bullpen to have a long day and then by process have a long series during the season. But what's happened is if, if they're not hitting home runs, they're just flat out not scoring. Uh, again, I, I want to do a deeper dive into the Cubs' A little bit later on, but a, a huge percentage of their runs that they scored this year were via the home run. And you get into the postseason, and 
the pitchers know how to avoid giving up those home run balls in big situations. And also the bullpen guys all come in throwing heat. 97, 98, 99, 100 miles an hour. And the Cubs hitters have shown that they're just not able to handle that consistently. That whether it be because they're, they've got a little bit too much of an uppercut in their swing, and so they're having a hard time catching up to the, hot, the upper fastball, or they're caught looking for other pitches so they're not able to catch up to the fastball, or they're, they're taking too big of a cut, and so they're not able to time up to the fastball. Something is going on that the Cubs, just they aren't able to catch up to the fastballs, and everybody coming out of the opponent's bullpens are flamethrowers. They're throwing so fast, so consistently, and the Cubs just aren't able to connect with it. Theo has referenced it multiple times. The Cubs have referenced it multiple times. The offense is broken. And right now, I don't know how you fix it. Um, They're going to have to do something this offseason. They're going to have to make some moves. Uh, the, The guys that I all mentioned, Rizzo, Bryant, Baez, Schwarber, Contreras, they're all coming out of contract at the end of, uh, you know, at the at the end of this year, of next year, at the end of twenty one, probably not. Every, you know, definitely not everybody's going to be kept. They're probably not going to be able to afford everybody. So you try to move some pieces. Well, you're quickly reaching the point where you're going to get diminished returns trying to trade everybody because they're kind of getting exposed. So I don't know what to do to fix the Cubs. It's it's a little depressing. I know, and I'm sorry, Northside. I don't know what to do. It's it, and Taryn just just chimed in. The Cubs can't even blame Steve Bartman. No, no, they cannot. They they should never have blamed poor Steve Bartman. But that's a conversation for a whole different time. We're not going to speak of him. I, I have said the name. I'm not saying the name again. We're we're moving on. Uh, um. So I don't have a quick, easy. Obvious fix, unfortunately. I I think the Cubs are in for a very long, dark winter. I I wish I could be rosier, but uh, but yeah, that's that's what I've got for the Cubs. As for the White Sox, they had that excellent first game. Game one was was terrific. You felt good. You thought, yes, they're they're going to be able to to. Build off this. They're going to be able to to learn from this. A four to one win. Got out to an early lead. Hey, they're young. They don't know. They don't know what they don't know. They're just gonna. They're gonna come out here and they're gonna take this series. And you've got Dallas Keuchel going game two. This is why you've brought Dallas Keuchel in on that on that big deal on one of the biggest deals at the White Sox historically a franchise that doesn't spend a lot of money. You brought him in on a. Big for the White Sox money deal specifically for this situation to be the postseason guy that 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 wily veteran that just knows how to win a postseason game and then he comes out in game two goes three and a third innings only you know gives up three earned runs has to burn sixty two pitches and just doesn't doesn't get the job done and and now you're left with. Well, now what do we do? Now how do we, how do we, where do we go from here? Now we've got to, now we've got to go to a game three. We don't have an obvious starter to plug into the game three. We're going to have to do have a bullpen game. And then the bullpen just imploded on itself in game three. You needed nine pitchers to get through eight innings, kept walking people, kept just, couldn't make things happen. The White Sox, though, they're young. As, as I've said repeatedly, the White Sox are young. This is the beginning of the championship window opening for the White Sox. Yes, Ricky Renteria made some mistakes against Oakland. No denying that. But I think it is totally out of line to be calling for Ricky to be fired at this point. 
nobody knew what to expect from the Sox this season. You had high hopes, but realistically, I don't think anybody was expecting the White Sox to have the best record in the American League heading into the final week of the regular season. Ricky's learning on the job, too. He finally got to manage a postseason series. Yes, he struggled with it, but the arrow is trending way, way up for the White Sox. Uh, there's a there's a joke about how there's an arrow trending down on their stadium right now, but I can't quite figure it out. Um, but the arrow the the arrow on the stadium may be trending down, but the arrow for the team is trending way, way up. I'm sorry, I'll try to keep the corny jokes done from now on. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Louis Robert, rough September, huge August. You've got to like what you saw from him. Jose Abreu, that's a that's a legitimate MVP candidate that you got out of him. That's somebody that you've got to, that's a leader for this team. He's near the end of his career, but he's still got it in the tank. He can get you a little bit further. Aloy Jimenez, injured in the in the postseason series against Oakland. Obviously, his defensive struggles, you know what they are, but that bat still that bat still plays. And a bullpen, you can fix a bullpen on the fly. We've seen teams do it. You can you can get some bullpen arms in the offseason or even in season if you need to. I'm not too worried about the bullpen. Rick Hahn is a smart guy. He's got pieces in the farm system. He can fix a bullpen. I trust Rick Hahn to be able to fix the bullpen problems for the White Sox. Starting rotation, Lucas Giolito looks like he's figured it out. He looks like he's the real deal. You've got your ace. Dallas Keuchel, rough postseason start, but there's still something there. Give him time. He's still got something in the tank to give you. Remember, the the Sox didn't have Michael Kopech, one of their best young pitchers, opted out of of this season for personal reasons. They're going to have him next year. That gives you tremendous depth in your rotation. That just gives you another depth piece in your rotation that you didn't have this year. Uh, Garrett Crochet, he might just stay in the bullpen. He might become a starter. You you know, that, that can help fix your starting rotation too. They've got pieces. Clearly they've got bats. They can, they can hit the ball. They can hit the ball well and consistently. I like the White Sox. I know this season ended not the way you hoped for the White Sox, but I like their sh- chances going forward. I'm excited to see what the White Sox can do going forward. I'm excited to see what 2021 will bring for the White Sox. All right, I hope that there was a little bit more of a perk as we head into this break. We want to talk some NFL. I want to talk a little bit more about Bears Buccaneers. And then this was a crazy, crazy week in the NFL. Let's kind of dive into it a little bit and see what might be happening in the NFL going forward as a result. This is Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What's up, everybody? This is Taryn Rodriguez. Are you a fan of volleyball? Are you a fan of Thunder Spikes? Then I have the show for you. Set Point, where I cover NCAA men's and women's volleyball, high school boys and girls volleyball, beach volleyball, and even professional volleyball. Catch the action every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports.
Hey, USRN fans, do you have a product or company you're trying to promote? Look no further. USRN is teaming up with small local businesses trying to establish themselves via online promotion. Let us know if you're interested. Email us at usrnradio at gmail.com to learn more. Hey, sports fans. Do you like wine? Well, we've got the show for you. This is Let's Wine About Sports, a show where we talk about wine and sports simultaneously. From the classic Cabernet Sauvignon all the way down to the grapes that you've never even heard of before. Oh, yeah, we cover it all. And we'll talk about a little bit of sports as well. Football, hockey, collegiate, women's sports, it doesn't matter. We're going to talk about it all, and we're going to whine about it all. So join me Monday at 8 p.m. on IU Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. College football, and do you want to hear a college football show dedicated to all this college football, including junior college and the Triple CAA and the NJCAA, the NAIA, and the NCAA, including Division Three, Division Two, II, Division One AA in the FCS, and Division One Single A in the FBS? Well, then look no further. Join myself, Larry B, and my colleagues, Mr. H Town Blake, Blake Henley, and Mr. Christian Espinoza, each week during the college football season for the latest in college football on three and out college edition right here on IE Sports Radio, your directly for all that is sports. Welcome back in here to Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Let's get back into football a little bit. This was a crazy week in the NFL. The Tennessee Titans 
became the Miami Marlins or the St. Louis Cardinals of the NFL. We are now up to 20 cases of COVID throughout the Titans organization. It forced the NFL to reschedule the Titans-Steelers game. It was supposed to be yesterday afternoon uh, in a featured spot. You know, CBS was, was going to be featuring it. A matchup between two undefeated teams had to get moved to Week 7. Fortunately, it was an easy enough fix in that Week 7 was the Titans' bye week. The team the Steelers were supposed to play in Week 7, the Ravens, wound up sharing a bye with the Steelers, so they were able to, to move that around. But it had a ripple effect throughout the NFL. You had that game on on hiatus. Then you had news that Cam Newton of the Patriots reportedly has COVID. And then a player for the Chiefs reportedly has COVID. It forced them to move that game from yesterday afternoon in the in the 325 spot to they're playing right now. They just started the second quarter, as a matter of fact. Uh, which then... F- Force the Bears game to get bumped up from the noon kick to the 325 kick. You had the Saints and Lions game almost didn't happen yesterday because there was a player for the Saints that had a false positive. COVID has found its way to the NFL. And as a result, the NFL today came out with a new list, a new new rules and regulations that the teams got to abide, that the, all the teams have to abide by. They're going to take longer now before letting a free agent come in and try out. They've, they've got a longer process now. That way, that incoming free agent doesn't uh, potentially bring COVID in with him. They're limiting the number of tryouts per week. Uh, you are not allowed to get together as a team outside of the club facility. The Raiders had a charity event where several of their players went to it and they were not wearing masks. Uh, The league is basically saying, okay, you cannot get together outside of the club facility. Now they're putting in video monitors in the facilities to make sure that everybody's complying even when they're in the facilities. The NFL, I hate to say dodged a bullet because I honestly don't think we're out of the woods yet with this. Unfortunately, one of the crazy things about this disease that we've learned is that it can sometimes take forever to show up. So... I don't, I don't feel comfortable saying that the league has dodged a bullet yet because I still feel like the Patriots and the Chiefs situation might still turn into something. I know everybody has since gotten retested and they haven't had any positive tests. I hope that stays the case for them, but I, I wonder and I hope that nobody else got it, but I, I fear that there may be others that have it that simply it hasn't had enough time to incubate inside of them yet. Um, so I, I wonder if the NFL is out of the woods. Um, I put it out there in the, in the IE sports group, uh, text feed yesterday that boy, everybody better enjoy this week because this might be the last week we get for a little while. Not quite feeling the same way today. It, it feels like, okay, we got through Sunday. The Titans didn't have any more players test positive as of this morning. So maybe they've, they've hit their number and now they can, they can figure out the next step. They're not scheduled to play again until a week from tonight. So they've got that extra day built in there. Uh, and again, hopefully nobody more for the, for the Patriots or the Chiefs have any more positive tests. Hopefully this is all it is, but I would be very cautious. Uh, you know, in, in NFL fans, let's enjoy what we're watching because this might be fleeting. Uh, I talked about it early on in the show about some different ideas that I personally had. Uh, yeah, I see Taryn chime in in the chat. Please, Titans, don't screw this up for the NFL. I 
I hope, I, I certainly don't think anybody did anything malicious, and I certainly hope that uh, nobody did anything crazy that started this whole process, that, that got this whole thing started. Uh, and even if they did, I hope that they have a speedy recovery and, and that they aren't too affected long-term health-wise by this thing. This thing is scary. For those that don't know, my, my sister is a nurse. She's out in the uh, in the Seattle, Washington area. I love my sister to death. Hey, sis, I, I have a feeling you you may not be listening live, but I know you, you chime in and listen from time to time. So, hey, sis, I love you. Uh, she, is, she is a nurse, and she has dealt with a ton of COVID patients since they came in. It's scary. It's a, it's a nasty bug. Uh, just, I'll leave it at that. It's, it's nasty. I hope that nobody has any serious long-term effects from this, either the coaches or the players that, that got it. Uh, and yeah, I, I hope that, that this doesn't get screwed up for the NFL. I hope that, um, that we get to continue watching this, but I enjoy the games that you can watch and, and enjoy it for what it is, because this thing might get shut down for a while. And if it does, the NFL is not baseball. You can't just play a double header and make up for it. You know, about the only way you could do a double header is say, okay, we're going to play four quarters, but the score at the end of quarter number two counts for that game. And then we start over for quarters number three and four and count that as a game. And I, I don't like that idea. I don't think anybody listening likes that idea, but you can't just tack on a game the way baseball does. Uh, it, it's it's a mess to try and figure out. So the league has started implementing. They're going to fine coaches even more. They might take away draft picks if teams are found in violation. They're starting to crack down and, and get serious about this as they as they should. So hopefully that doesn't end too badly for, for everybody. And we get to keep watching the game that we love. All right. What a show this week, huh? Ton to ton to get through. Bears, Cubs, White Sox. It wasn't great, but it was what it was. Bears get an early chance to try and cleanse their palate from all of this. Game Thursday night. Tom Brady's coming in. Mm. I think they can. I really do. I really do like the matchup for the Bears. The Bucs are coming in a little banged up. Their defense hasn't quite been as stout as necessarily they hoped it would be. They fell behind to the Chargers early yesterday. Brady's been throwing a lot of interceptions, some pick sixes a lot lately. Take advantage of this. Hopefully the offense can, can figure things out. Just enough to, to stay in this game, keep it competitive, and, and come up with a win. I really do think that this game is within grasp. And then you're four and one, you're right there in the driver's seat for the playoffs, and you get a little bit of extra time off and really figure out what is going to make Foles work as well as possible in this offense. Thank you again to Sean Hammond for jumping in and talking Bears with us. Thank you, especially to Taryn. My goodness, Taryn, you must live in these Spreaker chats, man. You you are right on it with the chats. So thank you for Taryn and to Larry coming in with the, with the chats. Thank you to everybody else that was listening. Coming up next here on IE Sports, we've got Let's Wine About Sports with Mike Pat. You may have heard the drop. Not only do you get to talk about some sports, you get to learn about some wines. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Learn learn a little bit more than I know about some reds and some whites and what, what goes with what. Check it out. He does an awesome job. Also over on USRN, they are going to be broadcasting the Monday night game when that starts at 7.50 Chicago time. And then coming up also later tonight after Mike does Let's Wine, you've got bases loaded with Brandon Buck and Blake Henley breaking down some of the MLB postseason. Have a good week. We'll talk to you next week. This is Chi-Town Weekly on IE Sports Radio. Stay safe and stay healthy, everybody.